bike's ability to feel light <laughs> at any speed is miraculous. Don't pull out. <laughs> I filled up my tires. I want to make sure I fill them up well. Front tire is a little high, back is perfect. Put it in sport mode gauges. Number three is my favorite. What is up with all the dirt? Oh, I know what's up with all the dirt. It's that freeze that we had last week. We actually did get a lot of ice. Nowhere near as much as last year. And now I go straight. Enough that it was a little dangerous going out and driving because, well, we don't have salt here and <laughs> we don't have winter tires. So what they do here is they just stick dirt down, sometimes sand. And so then it just sits on the road for weeks until it all ends up on the side of the road like you see here. What's going on guys? That's a cop. It's a nice 69 degrees outside. Got my heated grips on. <laughs> There was a few days where the high was in the 20s. It gets cold here. But anyways, you guys have seen the title. And yes, it's true. I did sell my Ruckus and buy a Range Rover. It, it wasn't like part of the same deal. I didn't take it into a dealership or find someone who was going to trade. And straight up <laughs> traded the Ruckus for a Range Rover. That would have been awesome. No, it happened uh, a couple weeks apart. But I did find a buyer for the Ruckus. Eventually, we came to a deal that we were both happy with, I think. And, uh... The Ruckus is no longer in my garage after four or five years. It's interesting seeing comments on videos when I say that I'm going to sell a bike because everyone has like their ideas on my motives for selling things. But I'll give you a little insight, let you into my mind a little bit. Sometimes I get in like this mindset where I have to sell everything that I have that I absolutely do not need. And as soon as I get a taste for selling something, I got to sell everything. Because then I'm like, man, I love cash. Let's sell everything that I own. So while some of these choices weren't just like impulse sells, they did kind of snowball into each other. Is that a cop? No, that's a truck. I was wondering if that cop had decided to follow me. So yeah, you guys are well aware. I told you guys that I was planning on selling just about every one of my bikes. I don't know if I was going to sell every single one, but... It's looking like that's going to be the case. And the Ruckus just happened to be the first one of the bunch. I told you guys in the last video that I uh, probably had a buyer for the S1000. That still seems to be the case and it will probably be sold within a week. I was going to take the R1 out today, but the freeze ended up killing the battery because I forgot to, to turn my key off. But yeah, I might have a buyer for the R1, but I still want to finish that build. There's still some main things that I want to do on that. I don't have a buyer for the CRF. I want to get that thing cleaned up. I'll, t I'll start riding that a little bit more and then make a decision on, wh on whether I actually want to sell that. But I probably will. And then the MT-09, keep a lookout on your emails. I'm going to be sending the uh, winner an email probably tomorrow. And then once the uh, MT-09 goes out, we'll finish up the, the Grom. Assuming I can get the freaking wheels, that's the main holdup on that build right now is wheels. Because it's hard to do some of the things that I need to do on that build until I have the wheels. And it, that is proving difficult to get the wheels that I want. Actually, my hands are getting hot. I'm gonna turn that off. So yeah, after that, no bikes in the garage. But before all of them are gone, I will be purchasing a new mo motorcycle. You guys know I'm touring the uh, Hyper Nakeds. I think the uh, 1200 RS Speed Triple, that will be the next one that I'm riding probably. And I gotta ride the, uh, the new Super Duke. I already rode the, rode the old one, but I wanna ride the new one. And then you guys also want me to ride a ZH2 and a Z900. The Ruckus was the first one of the bunch to get sold. The thing that I love about the builds that I've done is that they're all super unique. We got the stretch slammed engine swapped Ruckus. We have the Street Fighter R3. That was a giveaway, so I don't have that anymore. The CRF Supermoto, the build that started it all. Got my Super Sports that I built. The Ruckus was always one of the most fun bikes to ride. Unfortunately, where I live now, away from the city, everything is fast as soon as you leave my neighborhood. It's just not realistic. It's much more fun to ride in the city and I'm just way too far from it. I like looking at it and it's fun to rip around the neighborhood, but it just didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to own. So it'd been a while since I built the bike 
And I thought that I'd send it off to someone that could get some use out of it. And that's where the Range Rover comes in. You guys know I had a Gladiator. Well, had. I bought it a year ago because I was missing the Jeep life so much. I used to go to Hidden Falls, a local off-road park a lot, and I just missed it so much. But I had a ton of plans for the Gladiator and I really wanted to do an overlanding build on it, but it had been a year and I just, I could never get myself to justify spending all the money that I needed to spend on it. And I'm not a huge fan of the Gladiator stock. Like I don't really care for the looks of the Gladiator unless you do stuff to it, but I don't get a ton of use out of a truck. It's nice to have on the occasions when I want to throw a bike into it. There may be a handful of other occasions that I went to Home Depot and threw some stuff in it. But for the most part, I just don't use the uh, bed of the truck. I just, I wanted the Gladiator because I wanted a really good overlanding build. But I never ended up doing that. Part of it is because I didn't want to spend the money. Part of it is because I have kids and we haven't really started doing a lot of that kind of stuff with them yet. I think that might be something that we do a lot more when they get a little bit older. You know, Emmett's still only two years old, so it's just a little bit difficult to do that kind of long distance kind of stuff with them. You guys know that the, the market on used cars is insane right now. Like if you have something that's in demand, and like the Gladiator, that people can't get new, the used ones are going for a buttload of money. So I started thinking about it, and I've been thinking for a while about getting something else. Like, what if, you know, you guys know Fry Riding. Fry Riding is big into Jeeps. He's also big into buying cars. <laughs> and he knows how to get a deal. The dude has bought his fair share of uh, used vehicles and gotten killer deals on them. But he's rocking an old XJ right now, and he just bought uh, an old like 96 Jeep Grand Cherokee. He just inspired me. He inspired me. I really would just like to own something like a more classic kind of car. Not classic classic, but you know, there's so many cars that are just, you know, classic designs or very functionally uh, well-made. Just really good vehicles from the past that I'd like to own. It was the same thing when I bought my E46 M3. That was just one of my dream cars. Such a, you know, classically wished upon vehicle. I don't even know how to say it. Just a car that a lot of people would like to own. But this is kind of the mindset that I got in. I was like, I don't need to own a new car. So I started looking at a lot of old 4Runners, old Land Cruisers, uh, and the, the Lexus variants. And I also started looking at Range Rovers. I just love the look of this generation Range Rover Sport. They can run into a lot of problems, they can. But I just think that like, the one that I bought first came out in what, like 2006? Mine is a uh, 2013. But the design, it looks like it could be a modern car. Like it looked like it could be a new car that just came out today. I just think it looks that good. And it's always been a, a car that I wanted to own. So I started looking into them, realizing, how cheap you can get them for now. I started searching and I found one that I thought that I could get a good deal on and I just could not pass it up. It was pre pretty low mileage. It's a 2013, it's got 88,000 miles. And I'm, show, I'm gonna show it to you guys in a little bit, but I like having something that I can work on a little bit and solve some problems. I'm not a mechanic. I don't know everything by any means, but I can get my way around and, you know, figure some things out. And I'd like to get that way with cars too. And this Range Rover was always one that I really, really respected just from a design standpoint. I sold my Gladiator for the same price that I bought it for a year ago after 14,000 miles. Can't tell me that's not a good deal. Think if I can take care of everything, I'm gonna have a really nice car on my hands. So I'm gonna go get the Range Rover, find a nice spot to go over it, and uh, I'll show it to you guys. So here it is. Here is the 2013 Range Rover Sport that I just picked up. It's in pretty good condition. It's not perfect, but it is a nine-year-old car. So the guy I bought it from definitely took it off road. So there's some like tree scratches. I know he took it to Hidden Falls, which I'm familiar with. There's a lot of trees there. So you got some, some blemishes here and there along the sides and stuff. But a lot of this I think is gonna come off um, just by doing a, a full, full detail on here. Just some buffing, I think it'll come off. Stuff like this is where it won't come off. Like this is something that I can't really repair because it's actually faded paint. He's got some off-road tires on here, which are nice. I appreciate that, except for the fact that uh, they're too big um, and they're not great for gas mileage. And this thing already doesn't get good gas mileage. Also, this one doesn't match. So it's got an alignment problem um, and it's all wheel drive. So that's an issue. So I'm going to put all new tires on here to get everything uh, matched up and have hopefully a little bit better gas mileage on here. The front. <laughs> The grill is a little bit faded. I want to replace that. This 
headlight right here is kind of janked up. I checked inside and this has actually been opened up. I don't know if someone was trying to replace the lights or paint the inside or I don't know what they were doing, but I need to replace that headlight. Going around to the rear of the car, we also got some faded uh, emblems on the back. So I kind of want to replace all of them with black ones. And then uh, maybe eventually, if I decide to keep the car long term, replace the wheels with some some nice uh, black wheels. These are 20 inch, and I think I'd eventually, I'd eventually want to go 21 if I end up changing them. Inside is pretty good. The seats are in nice condition. They got these suede inserts on the on the middle. I don't know what was available from the factory, um, but this is the Lux version. It's an HSE luxury. Uh, there's also the supercharged versions and the autobiography. I can't remember what autobiography gets you, but the only thing that this really doesn't have is a supercharger. Here on the dash is the, the main issue. The whole leather is peeling up and it's a, a not uncommon problem that I've seen on these. Unfortunately, it's a major pain to get replaced. People who have actually gotten replaced by, replaced by a dealership, it costs them like $4,000. So I might just end up taking it apart and taking it to a local upholstery shop and then it should only be a couple hundred dollars. Otherwise, the interior is pretty good. I wanna replace these knobs. These are kind of janked up. The uh, steering column control needs to re be replaced because it's not uh, always working. There's an e-brake fault, so I need to diagnose what's going on with the e-brake because it's got a flashing light for the parking brake whenever you drive. And then the main problem is that it's got a, an error code for the fuel system. It's like low pressure, fuel rail sensor, something or other. There's hopefully a cheap, easy fix for that. Just replacing a sensor that might solve it. If not, probably gonna have to replace the fuel pump. But because of that, the car is currently in a low performance mode, so. It drives fine, it just can't go fast at all. Other than that, I'm really happy with it. It's got a V8, it feels awesome. It's a heavy vehicle, but having the V8 in here, like even with it in low performance mode, it's just like, a, uh, the way it drives, I, I love it. It feels so nice. So I'm really, really excited for this. I'm hoping that uh, we can take care of the, the issues that it's got and I'll have a, a nice vehicle on my hands. If any of you guys own one, and you've encountered any of the problems <laughs> that I've got, let me know. Again, it's a 2013. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, put them down in the comments. If you're interested in the CRF, shoot me an email. That's in the description as well. Otherwise, you guys have been awesome. I've been Mona Nosity. Remember, life's better with horsepower. Keep life lived. I'll see you guys in the next one.